A world tour by FlightSim. We fly you around the world in your personal private jet. We arrived to Queenstown from Stewart Island in Milford Sound. Today, we fly past Mount Cook to Christchurch. Starting from Queenstown, set amidst the Southern Alps, we head to Mount Cook, the highest peak in New Zealand, offering breathtaking alpine views. The flight continues over the Fox and Franz Josef glaciers, showcasing dramatic ice landscapes against the backdrop of dense rainforests. We then cross the Canterbury Plains, a vast expanse of agricultural land, moving towards the Banks Peninsula. Here, Akaroa stands out with its historic buildings and French influences. The journey concludes in Christchurch, a city that has reinvented itself after the earthquakes with modern architecture and vibrant street art. Welcome back to our second flight on World Tour by Flightsome. And here we are, about half an hour past, uh, past sunrise, uh, about to take off. Just give you a little look around um, Queenstown Airport. That's the um, remarkable mountain range. It's very steep. There's a ski field on the other side in the winter. This is currently in February. And off we go. Flaps on half. Bit of chattering in the back seat there, you can hear. Gotta be you. <laughs> Get us up to 90. Still got the runway lights on. And rotate. Lots of new developments in Queenstown. Continues to grow very rapidly. Okay, we've just gone a bit past 9,000 feet. We're just locking it in. Even in summer, there's a bit of snow on the mountains. My airspace radar service terminated squawk 7000. The town you can see down there, that's Wanaka. It's become a very popular holiday place. It's become quite expensive now as well, uh, along with Queenstown. Uh, as I said on the last video, one of the most expensive places in New Zealand. Yeah, a lot of development in Wanaka, as you can see on top of the hill there. Uh, brown patch down in the middle. Beautiful morning again. Stunning. A little bit of snow on that hill, still. We're coming up to Benmore Dam now. Uh, Benmore Dam is a pretty important part of the New Zealand electricity system. Uh, it's twice the size, the dam area is twice the size of Wellington Harbour. Uh, Wellington's the, the capital of the country and has a pretty big harbour. Do a bit of a bit of a dive here. Be a bit of a thrill on the back seat. Oh, good. Right Air up top speed. of it. There you go. Air speed. Let's spin more down. Air speed. Air speed. Ooh. Pull up. <gasps> Pull up. Ooh, just made it. Air speed. Air speed. Hopefully, you're all back. Air speed. We'll find it back in the back seat there. Hopefully, you're all fine in the back seat. Uh, so. Benmore Dam generates enough power to supply around 300,000 homes per year. And it's uh, a lot of people canoe and and boat in the in the lake area at the top of it. This area just down below us. The lake in the distance here is Lake Pukaki. Lake Pukaki leads right up to Mount Cook. Okay, so we're coming into Mount Cook. Just drop the altitude a little bit so we can have a, a look see. 
You can see it um, splits into two here, basically, two valleys. On the right is the Tasman Glacier, uh, and on the left is Mount Cook Village, so down to down below us to the left there. There's a beautiful hotel called the Hermitage. Uh, the Hermitage, don't know if you can see it there. There's the airport, obviously. Uh, but the, the Hermitage, yeah, you can see it down there. Okay. It's a uh, right in the middle of the screen. Beautiful place to stay. It's got massive uh, windows, kind of I don't know, six seven meters high, looking out up over Mount Cook. See, this looks straight up the valley. Ooh, see, it looks straight up the valley here to uh, to Mount Cook. I'll try and uh, let's go for the part and just give you a bit of a closer look down. Down here. Going to one two nine or decimal three WTFS one. New Zealand Center WTFS one one zero thousand feet. Let's uh take a closer one, look at Mount Cook here. So Mount okay. Cook's this uh, this peak just to our right. Decimal tree WTFS one. Goodbye. Nine thousand. That's Mount Cook, the highest part of New Zealand. WTFS one approach altimeter two nine or decimal nine or two radar contact continue. Gorgeous. Breathtaking. So here we can see the uh, the west coast. It's the west coast of the South Island. Once you get over the mountain range here, the Southern Alps, just descends into very thick uh, rainforest. We're coming up to two glaciers here, very popular with tourists, uh, the Fox Glacier and the Franz Josef Glacier. Um, we're about to fly right over the um, the Fox Glacier, actually. That's coming up right over this rise. There we go, that's the start of the Fox Glacier. Let's try and get a better look. Beautiful, that's the Fox Glacier. Absolutely fantastic. It goes pretty fast, it's going... It's known along with the French Joseph Glacier, which we're going to get to soon, as being two of the faster glaciers in the world. Um, and the Franz Josef Glacier, just there is the Franz Josef Glacier. There it is, it looks a lot shorter than the Fox Glacier. Much shorter. The west coast of New Zealand. There we go. Oh, absolutely stunning. Look at that. The Southern Alps in all its glory. And in summertime, obviously in wintertime, it's, uh, it's a lot whiter. What we're going to do now is we're going to go down the, on the way to Christchurch, we're going to go down the Tasman Glacier, which was, remember when we were coming up to uh, Mount Cook, there was that fork, the two valleys. We went up the left fork, and that was to Mount Cook. Now we're going to go down the right fork. We've got Mount Cook again on our right, coming up on our right. Look at that, see the glacier coming down the mountain. Fantastic. That's where it all starts. And that, uh, what, what they call that, um, the coal, um, where all the snow accumulates and then turns into a glacier as it sinks down the down the mountain. See the crevices in the glacier there? And the, all the um, grey, that's uh, moraine. So that's basically uh, pebbles and bits of rock, lots of it, uh, that have fallen down onto the glacier. But below that grey is, is ice. Uh, that's just covering, that's just covering it up. 
As you can see, there's ice uh, at the start of the lake there. That's the bottom of the glacier, and all that uh, all that grey stuff's just rot. There's another little glacier, small one, on the right there that you can see. So this uh, braided river here is uh, obviously coming out from the Tasman Glacier uh, as it melts in the uh, spring and spring and summer, and it feeds into Lake Pukaki, the lake we flew up. Um, but now we're going to turn off to the left, saying goodbye to the Mount Cook region and pretty quickly gets a lot uh, lot drier as we go away from the hills. That little town there, that's Tekapo. And that's Lake Tekapo. Tekapo is a fairly popular to be honest, I've been there. Not a massive fan, it's kind of nice, but um, the main thing to do there is boating and there's an observatory there. Um, a very good observatory which you can imagine has pretty stunning views uh, because there's no pollution. There's no pollution and uh, because there's not much moisture, there's not much rain, there's not many clouds. Right, we can see the coast now. See in the distance there? That's obviously the east coast of New Zealand. Christchurch is up basically under the sun. Yeah. So that river we're going down now, that's the Rakai River. Pretty substantial river. It's got a, it's a, got a very long bridge. It's pretty wide. It's called a, but there's not a lot of water in it, right? It's not uh, like the Mississippi or something like that. But it's um, what's called a braided river. So that grey, remember the grey on the Tasman Glacier, all the stones, same stuff. So all these stones that come down from the mountain, um, they are they just accumulate in the river, and you get this braided effect. It's actually a lot of the rivers of them. Definitely not all of them, but the vast majority of rivers in the South Island are braided rivers because of all the... It's not sediment, right? It's, it's actual rock, uh, little stones um, that come down from the mountain. This lake here is called Lake Ellesmere. It's a very large, fairly shallow lake, a very shallow lake. It's got some um, interesting bird life on it. Uh, quite a few flounder, you know, the flat fish that live on the seafloor. This hilly area you can see in front of us that's called Banks Peninsula. It was formed by two ancient volcanoes. Looks like a lot more, but I'm told it's two. Uh, and it's got deep harbors, craggy headlands, and a mosaic of bays and beaches. One of the beaches, a little town actually, is called Akaroa. And we'll go right over that. It's very popular with, uh, with tourists. It's got lots of craft shops, a few very good restaurants. No surf, right? It's uh, very protected water, um, very peaceful. And it was actually founded by the founded by the French. So it's got a French influence. A couple of French restaurants and I don't know how many French people are there now, but uh, it's got a French feel to it. Over that hilly area here, Banks Peninsula, over the top of that is Christchurch. You can kind of see it in the distance in the top left. Uh, Christchurch has about 300,000 people. It's the largest city in the South Island. Uh, it's on the coast. Pretty cold water though. You are good? You are good back there? Nice and green. A bit more rain over, over this way. So, this is Akaroa. Coming in pretty, pretty fast, but it's alright. Um, throw a bit of, bit of sun reflection off the water there. So this is um, the little village I mentioned that has a French colonial history. Not a lot to see from the air, but just some nice, uh, beautiful bays.
That harbour you see coming up on the left, that's Littleton Harbour. That's the main harbour for Christchurch and one of the two largest harbours in the South Island, along with uh, Port Chalmers, which is in which is in Dunedin. There's a nice little village at Littleton with lots of good coffee shops and uh, it feels very isolated from Christchurch, which a lot of people like because it's kind of peaceful. Kind of peaceful, um, so you can see the the, the range of hills uh, in between Christchurch on the right and Littleton uh, on the left. That's Sumner Beach down there, very popular beach spot. Taylor's Mistake is a little beach to the left. That um, beach to the right of the entrance to the uh, um, to the river. That's um, that's Brighton Beach, and then further up is, is Waimari. Right in front of us is the centre of Christchurch. Again, right over central Christchurch at two thousand feet. Probably illegal, but. Downtown Christchurch. It's a nice view of Christchurch. There's the runway in front of us. Five hundred. Too high. Oh, we're gonna do it. There's Bex Peninsula. WTFS when you are not clear to land. We weren't clear to land. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, now in the next flight, uh, we're going up to Wellington uh, via Kai Kura and via Nelson. And landing at Wellington will be difficult. It's one of the windiest airports in the world. It's a beautiful landing there. So stick around uh, for the next video, which will be up on the screen there uh, once we've flown it.